So the next item on the list is property tax. So explain a little bit about how property taxes are handled when it comes to the buyers and the seller. So we communicate with the county on that and we prorate the taxes depending on the time of the year that the transaction is happening. And the county basically tells us what is gonna be happening there, what is owed, and then we facilitate that all between the buyer and the seller. Mm -hmm. So that they're only paying for the, or the time of the year that they should be focused on and when they're moving in. So there are lots of costs to consider when you're in a real estate transaction. And one thing you need to think about as buyer or seller are closing costs. So joining me right now, I have Chris Medina, who is director of sales with Navi Title. And we're gonna break down closing costs and basically what those costs mean for buyers and what they mean for sellers. So Chris, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to reference this, and this is an actual settlement statement that I have from Navi Title, which is the title company that you're with and the title company that I partner with. We'll get into a little bit of that later, though, on why it's important to pick good partners in this industry. Absolutely. So let's just talk about some of the some of the fees involved so this settlement statement you know the purchase price on this it was a, a condo for an investor two hundred and forty five thousand dollars so the first fee i want to look at we'll just kind of kind of go down in order here twenty five hundred dollars so that was the earnest money deposit so why is it important for earnest money to go to a title company? And let me just say, we typically like to see about 1% being deposited, 1% of the purchase price being deposited. So why is it important for the title company to hold on to that money? Uh, it's kind of a good faith deposit uh, on behalf of the buyer. We keep that in escrow uh, throughout the transaction mm -hmm. as we do our due diligence and facilitate the transaction. And then once we come to a close, that earnest money is then applied to the purchase price for that buyer. Okay, and let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Okay. We have issues sometimes where the buyer doesn't do what, you know, they said they were going to do as far as the contract goes or the seller. And then there's a dispute over who gets the earnest money. Yeah, so if the buyer doesn't perform, mm -hmm. uh, there are, you know, there is verbiage and there are things set forth in that contract to protect both sides. Uh, and if the buyer goes through the entire process, they are not able to perform. We have a legal team that looks over these contracts, knows the verbiage, and will look at it. And then as a non-biased third-party fiduciary, figure out which way or which direction that earnest money should go, whether that be back to the buyer, if they did everything they were supposed to, and the seller could not perform or carry mm -hmm. out, then we'll go that way. Mm -hmm. If the buyer backed out and the seller did everything they were supposed to do, then we will judge in favor of that seller and let it go that way as well. Obviously, we hope that that doesn't happen, but if yeah. it gets to that point, we do take care of it. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't happen very often. Very rarely. Yeah, it doesn't. But I think it is, it's very important that you guys are a neutral third party because it's not just up to the agents or our brokers who are deciding who gets to keep the money. There would be a, a lot of bad blood if that There'd was the case. There would be a lot of bad blood. Okay. So moving on, uh, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, HOA fees. So those fees do not you know, have anything to do with the title company, but you guys are the ones that reach out to the title company and you verify, like it's called the demand, right? HOA disclosure. So you verify all the fees and facts and figures. Yeah, so HOA companies uh, in general, there are now, they're not only managing the homes within that community, but multiple communities and multiple mm -hmm. homeowners, and they can be Slow. Uh, a, <laughs> a challenge. Slow. Very sometimes small. to communicate with. So <laughs> one of the things that we do uh, immediately right away is reach out to those HOA companies and find out uh, if there are any liens, any HOA fines that haven't been uh, taken care of, what the fees are, and make sure that those, all those things are accounted for. Mm -hmm. uh, they have about 10 days to respond to us on some of those things. Uh, and so when they do, then we can move forward with the contract at that point in time. Right. And we see violations. That's typically what we see are violations that, that come up. Like we sent out, you know, a letter and you're supposed to paint your house and you didn't paint your house. So, you know, those, those kinds of things surface. And, and a lot of times it, that's good, especially if you're representing the buyer and, you know, you get your buyer into a home and then the next thing they know they're slapped with, you know, you've got to paint the house. Yeah. I mean, obviously little things like they have a 
uh, a fine for not picking their weeds in their front yard is one thing they can get past. But to right. your point, architectural paint, things like that, those right. are the things that we want to find out in the front so that you're not getting down to, you know, the end of the road and about to f sign the contract to move in only to find out that now you have $5,000 worth of work you have to do mm -hmm. for this brand new house that you just bought. We try to get past those and clear all those roads ahead of time. Yep. And, and you know, back to the HOAs, uh, a lot of times, yes, they, they are not quick and, and we get the information late in the game. So you guys always help effort that, which is fantastic. That's why we start early on those. Absolutely. So let's talk about the escrow fees. I think a lot of people have, have questions about, you know, the fees that the title company charges directly. Absolutely. So the escrow fees are actually split between the buyer and the seller. And the escrow fee is very much a charge that we charge for mm -hmm. the service that we do. Uh, just like any business or any service that you provide, it comes at a cost. And as far as the escrow specific fees, mm -hmm. that is a fee that we charge for services provided. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a team, you have your team, your escrow officer, potentially one, two or more assistants, always working on those files. Notary. Notaries, all those things involved. And so that is a fee that is split evenly between the buyer and seller. Mm -hmm. And the escrow fee specifically, yes, is to account for the services being provided. Okay. And... What's interesting here is, you know, my client was or is an investor. And so there are, you know, some investor fees. And these are typically probably people that use your title company over and over and over again and they're investors. So they get a little bit of a break on some fees. Yeah. So we do for our investors, uh, first responders, military, uh, there are certain discounts that we apply an escrow fee discount. And that discount comes directly off of our charge for the company. So we are actually discounting our own services mm -hmm. to take care of those people, whether it be an investor that is investing in multiple properties and using us multiple times, right. or like I said, our first responders, military, et cetera. Yeah. We want to make sure that we are thanking and giving back to those people. So right. we do discount our services for that. And I love that since my husband's a retired police officer and we do a lot of business with law enforcement. So that's, that's very, that's great for us. We're grateful for them and we always want to give back any way we can. We love it. So let's talk about the owner's title insurance. Okay. That occasionally, I mean, I've been doing this for quite a long time, hundreds and hundreds of transactions. I've only had a couple of times where somebody has pushed back on this, but it does happen. Can you just kind of give me a rundown on what the owner's title insurance is? Yeah. So first and foremost, the most important thing to know about title insurance for the owner is that it's actually part of the AAR contract. Mm -hmm. It has to be paid for by the seller. Right. Okay. And it's a boilerplate item that's in the Arizona purchase absolutely. contract. It's in the purchase contract. Right. And what that is there for, it is there to insure against any liens and full ownership for the life of the house leading up to this transaction. So if a house was built in 2003, for example, and you are selling it in 2023, they are essentially insuring that everything for the life of that home before handing off to the new buyer mm -hmm. is insured, is covered. The owner's policy is good. There are no liens and everything is moving forward in good faith. And occasionally you do get the person that's like, why should I have to pay for this? Well, for the seller, I mean, you have to pay for it because you you have to insure that for this buyer taking your home, that everything is free and clear. Right. You're essentially guaranteeing that everything that you've done in that home is, is moving forward in good faith. Right. Agreed. And that you're not going to have any surprises. Absolutely. But that's our job to dig into those. So as they pay for that, we're also digging in to make sure and to clear all those items to make sure everything's taken care of. Right. And for this purchase price of 245 the policy was $1,400. Yeah, so there's a couple contributing factors there. Um, when you talk about, uh, you know, percentage of money that you should allocate when it comes to title and escrow and things of that nature, for your sellers, it's typically right around 1% of your mm -hmm. purchase price that you would think to allocate for your escrow fees or title and escrow fees. Uh, for the buyer, it's that or a little bit less because like we just talked about, the seller is covering that title policy. Mm -hmm. So there's one fee that's included that buyers don't have. Mm -hmm. um, but with this particular uh, transaction, as you mentioned, there was a discount for the investor rate there. So that's why that brought that down just a little bit more. Gotcha. But yeah, in general, give or take 1% of your purchase price. Okay. And then here's just a little tiny one. This is a signing fee. And I just want to explain that this, you can opt into this. You can sign at Navi Title and it's free. Right. But if you decide to have a mobile notary come to you, at your place of work or your home or whatever that looks like, then typically there's going to be a $100 fee for that. 
Yeah, so we have our notaries that go out and, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, husband, wives, brothers, sisters, boyfriends, girlfriends, different schedules. Somebody works in the day, somebody works at night, and you can't always get to a place where people can't just take time off to go in and sign their contracts, right? So we can send somebody to you and they can show up to your workplace, to your home, mm -hmm. to your office. We've had people meet people in a parking lot and sign on the hood of a car. Like yeah. whatever needs to be done, we want to make sure to take care of you the best way we possibly can to make sure to move forward in as seamless as possible. And during COVID, that's exclusively what was happening. That's all that we did. Uh, yep. During COVID, we, you know, for safety and health regulations, um, we obviously had our doors closed and just um, closed off for only our office personnel. So we were only sending notaries out mm -hmm. uh, during that time. Again, there was a lot of uh, protocols and guidelines in place at that time, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's what we had to do and, and we took care of a lot of great things during that time. So the next item on the list is property tax. So explain a little bit about how property taxes are handled when it comes to the buyers and the seller. So we communicate with the county on that and we prorate the taxes depending on the time of the year that the transaction is happening. And the county basically tells us what is gonna be happening there, what is owed, and then we facilitate that all between the buyer and the seller. Mm -hmm. So that they're only paying for the asp or the time of the year that they should be focused on and when they're moving in. Okay, great. So let's just break this down. I typically tell people, sellers, that when they say, what should I allot for um, title fees? And I typically say 1%. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair about one percent, that, and I'd rather that, that be on the high side than quote somebody too low. So for a seller, it's typically one percent. For a buyer, it's typically one percent as well. But then they have the separate lending fees. Yeah, and those lending fees are going to vary uh, depending on the lender or bank that you're working with. And so for those, we can't really speak on. It's right. kind of a wide range. But on the title side of things, yeah, still around that one percent, and, and maybe even safe. a little bit less. Yeah, yeah. I, I think typically it is a little bit less depending on the purchase price of the house. Sure. It also depends on if they have a loan or if there's a cash buyer there. And that's where a lot of the, because if we're dealing with the lender, yeah. uh, then there's extra steps involved there. Right. But if they're coming in cash, this was uh, cash, like your investor here on yeah. this transaction, right. um, then that also brings those fees down a little bit lower as well. Right. And let's just also talk a little bit about Navi title and, you know, the importance of hiring an agent that has good relationships with reputable partners. And, you guys have so much experience. Navi Title is relatively new, correct? Couple of years. We are, yeah. So uh, what we like to say is that we are a startup that's not necessarily a startup. Right. Um, we are a little over two years uh, here in the Valley, locally owned, uh, which is important to us. But we also come with staff, you know, in our escrow staff that is 15, 20 and more years into the business. So mm -hmm. a ton of experience, both on the escrow side, uh, on the underwriting side, like everything is covered with years and years of experience. Um, and just like with anybody wanting to work with a experienced realtor themselves, such as yourself, uh, that matters. And that is important just for their, <laughs> just for their, uh, not only their knowledge of the market and what they're right. doing, but the, the consistency and the follow-up and the communication and the yes. things that they need to be in lockstep with. Uh, yep. it, it is very, very important. Communication for me is Huge. number one. And when somebody wants to argue about, I want to use this title company or that title company, typically, and this is a little sticky, but I'm going to go there. Typically, if you're representing a buyer, buyer chooses title. And you will get people that want to push back on that. And the seller, you know, wants to push back or the seller's agent wants to push back on that. But it's typically buyer's choice. It typically is. And it kind of goes, ties into what we talked about earlier that when a seller sells the home, they are covering the owner's policy for that buyer to say that it's free and clear and there are no liens on that property. Ownership is good. So as a buyer, it matters to me potentially who that title company is because they're the ones that are insuring this property mm -hmm. that I am now buying. So that's that factors in a lot to why a buyer typically will try to choose on that format. Yeah. And I hear from agents all the time that, you know, some agent that they're doing a cross deal with chooses some obscure title company and they go dark on them. They can't get in touch with them. They don't know what's going on in the process of the closing or anything. It's a nightmare. It's tough. It's tough. You know, there's over 150 title companies here in the Valley. Um, but you guys are number. <laughs> we're number three. Uh, we're number three uh, with regards to, and, and when I say that, that ties into market share with the amount of transactions that we cover right 
here in the Valley. So we, we just talked about having been kind of a new company, but a part of going from that bottom brand new company into that top 10, top five, and now three uh, ties into not only the experience with our staff, but uh, obviously uh, forging relationships with great realtors such as yourself that really know what they're doing. You could, how many times are you gonna call me a great realtor? This I mean, is as, awesome. As many as I, as many as I can. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that is how we got to that point and we will continue to go from there. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, that agents that are experienced, they like to have partners that they can lean on and they can trust and they can count on. Yeah. I mean, the tagline of who you work with matters, uh, seems kind of salesy or played out or whatever it may be, but it's just a fact. And, you know, working with a realtor that's five days into the business versus five, 10, 15 years, there's a night and day difference. And mm -hmm. the same thing that comes with the title companies or your lenders or anybody else in that transaction, uh, you know, buying or selling a home is one of the most stressful and anxiety ridden things that you can do in this lifetime. So working with somebody and a group of people that really know what they're doing is of the utmost importance. And we stress that every day. Yep. And we try to alleviate stress for people. That's what we should be doing. That's our job. That's our job. If we're not taking uh, pressure off of your shoulders and stress off your plate. Like, what are we here for? Right. I agree. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, having for the me. breakdown because people always want to know what, what are the fees and, you know, get an idea of what they're going to have to pay. And if you have any questions for Chris, or if you have any questions for me, please ask below and we will jump right on and get those questions answered for you.